Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I've just looked up at the camera and realized I wasn't recording. I got so carried away with the making of my snippet roll, the next one, which is Champagne Garden, that I've been yibby yabbering away for probably 20 minutes and not recorded any of it. So I'm going to rewind. Now, this is what I've done so far. Can you believe it? Halfway down the snippet roll and I didn't hit record. That's because I'm just too darn excited about this whole project. So, now where were we? We've got three snippet rolls. We've got the Colour Wave, and it's just sitting here pinned yet to be stitched down. That's going through the neutrals, the pinks, the purple, or the lavender into the blues. I filmed that video. I put it aside ready to stitch all those elements down. And I've got the next two ready to go. So I've decided I'm going to do Champagne Garden next, hence what you're looking at. And my box of tricks that inspired me, if you've watched the introduction video, were these table runners. I just love their, their tones. So I'm not sure what I'll cut out of them yet. If anything, who knows? But that's definitely where the, the whole idea sort of came from. The other thing I want to find some homes for are these lace handkerchiefs that I've got. They're sitting in my cupboard and I really want to, you know, use elements of them, use some of this fabric, yeah, get in amongst them a little bit. I've then got um, some random braids here and this odd little doily. And I've also got a couple random little doilies like that. So I'm not sure how lacy this piece is going to get. It's sort of is looking like it's not going to be too lacy and it's going to be more about the embroidery and the stitching which is great i am thinking that there will be a little bit of green pop into it i think that goes well with champagne and i also found this piece which is real shimmery so i've just sort of pieced that into there and the other thing is i've got this pack of fabric from rachel that i've had for probably 18 months and um, i've been hoarding it sitting on it and I need to do something with it. And what better piece of work to work on is a Roxy Journal of Stitchery. So that's the plan. Just going to get rid of this bit of red. We'll keep these little morsels because once we get into the detail of the embroidery, all those little bits. So yeah, I've been chatting away to you and you haven't even been listening and I've piece down a heap of the projects. I do apologize. Um, just bring you up to speed. I've just been laying good sized chunks down this time. I'm keeping it as simple as I can. I've got a piece of braid coming in here and there was the edge of this linen table runner here, this little crochet edge. So not too much lace at the moment, just all about the fabrics on this particular piece. And being there from uh, Italy, it's a bit of a tribute to the girls. This little piece of braid, I've just put some sticky tape around the edge of it so it'll stop it from unraveling. And then once I get ready to stitch it down, I can remove the tape and put a heap of little stitches in there and it'll never fall apart or unravel. This one's going to have a lot of embroidery on it because I've got lots of space to do things as the prompts come along. So I'm really happy with the way this is coming together. And I was just starting to look at putting a bit of music in amongst it. And I'm looking at that piece and I think it's upside down, which it is. So let's turn that around the right way and get that there so that the numerals are correct. So the background, invisible stitch, of course, just to get rid of the pins, but then I'll do camphor stitch, um, blanket stitch. Yeah, there'll be a lot of embroidery on this one because it's such a nice neutral palette. I think, um, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun, this one. So let's get some more fabric down. So just tucking in bits and bobs. What else have we got? A little bit more of this soft white linen would be good. Just fray it up a little bit. 
So I do apologize for missing the first 20 minutes of it, but I guess I've shot ahead and now we can sort of carry on together. Right there. Okay, and I was also saying how my mate Mary Ann will be coming around on Friday night to start her piece. She's very nervous about it all and she doesn't need to be. She's a very talented girl, but she just hasn't done a lot of work like um, freehand embroidery. That's this slow stitch movement is we're so used to getting patterns or little projects and creating them. This slow stitch that the girls are doing and um, oh, there's quite a few artists out there that are popping up around the place. It's allowing us all to play a little bit more. So you might start with a, a project and you sort of, I don't know, you head off on a, I'm just thinking here, you head off on a tangent that takes your fancy. I'm thinking about putting that doily right there. Can I cut it without losing too much floral? If I cut it like that. Yeah, I like that. Let's do it. Yeah, um... I think that's what Mary Ann's nervous about is we're used to having patterns or, you know, a bit of a guide where this is freehand. This is like picking up a paintbrush of fabric and just going for it. So um, she's pretty nervous about it, but she doesn't need to be because she's a talented girl. So I can't wait to see how her piece comes together. I will keep you posted. Just going to lay that little bit of linen under there. The linen's nothing super special, so I'm not worried that it's disappearing a little bit there. And I showed you in the video um, prior to this one that she's chosen her she's chosen her colours. And she's thinking of doing the seasons. So um, summer, winter, spring and autumn. But as I said, I'm filming this on Thursday, the day after the reveal. And we're getting together Friday night, roast dinner. And then Marianne and I will disappear into my craft room. And the boys will go and put a movie on. And we'll see what comes of our adventures. She's going to be doing a spool. Well, I think she is. I, yeah, I think she is. I've got a spool for her. So she's going to be doing a spool. So that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Nice and neutral. So let's, let's see what else we can do. I need a bit of this green in. Do I want green? I think so, because that's going to help with doing leaves. Yeah, we're going to do... We're bringing olive into the champagne garden. Hope I don't regret that. But anyway, I think I'll need to because otherwise all my embroidery will be very neutral and it would be good to bring in, you know, olive ribbon and things like that. Just to, yeah. Okay. And this was the one roll, the one piece that I was a bit concerned that it looked very similar to the um, snippet roll I'd already created in neutrals. So to bring a little bit of green into this one, I think is probably a good idea. find it really enjoyable stretching out a doily edge and stitching it down. It's like, you know how they get all crumpled up once they get washed and if they're not starched 
and um, treated that way, doilies tend to become a bit of a crumpled mess. I really enjoy pulling all of those little elements out and popping a little stitch there to get the shape back that was intended by the pattern maker. Is that silly? It's like I'm, you know, reinventing that that curve otherwise it's all crumpled and messy but once you start pulling them out and stitching them down they just they look beautiful anyway now I need something down this edge here where's those handkerchiefs maybe there's an edge I can where'd they get to here's a little crocheted edge on this one I think I will snip that edge off. There you go, little doily. Do I... How am I going to do this? Do I have it on that outer edge? Probably overthinking it. Do I... Sorry, guys. Just cut it, Corinne. Stop thinking. a little hole in it there. I'm just going to cut a strip off and maybe that strip will come in handy to create some little zones for you know stitching garden gardens in and that. So I'm thinking it's going to just pop in like so. Just a random, or do I tuck it under all of them? I sort of don't mind that. Bring it right up to there. You can't see. I've gone to the top of that gold fabric. Let me bring it down a bit. And it's just under all of that. Problem is, I was short here, so I sort of want to disguise the fact that I've come up a bit short on that side. Maybe I'll find another piece of something to go on top. You see how that green doesn't quite edge, or do I take that green out? bring it back. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... No, do I? Do I not? Yeah, I'm going to take that green out because that can be a morsel somewhere else, you know? Like it's part of that little bits that we use to build a garden bed into. So I'm just going to put them all to one side. I don't need any more of that, I don't think. And then maybe I find a piece of something a bit special to go down this side. Do I do another? Yeah. Let's... Let's chop into this. Oh, it's beautiful. Come on, cut. Gee, it's hard to cut. It's nearly like Hessian. Well, we could bring Hessian into this. Yeah, I like that. Maybe we get some Hessian. Do I have any Hessian on my table? Mum, 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 mum. I don't know if I do. I can always lay that in. Yeah, I'll save the Hessian idea. And when I start doing embroidery, I can use Hessian and bits and pieces to sort of add fibres and things like that. 
So that's that's all good. Um, what are we going to put in this zone? A little bit of that maybe. Do we come across? I think you'll find that this will come together really quickly for you all. I think, uh, I know a few have said, oh wow, four pieces, but I have a feeling that once you get the background done, you'll pick up your piece and the bulk of the work is done. You've just got to do the little prompt. So whether it's a little house or wildflowers or whatever. So I think you'll find that you may do a few. I know you're all thinking, no way, Corinne, you're a lunatic. But I think you will be surprised at how how quickly this sort of comes together for you. This is probably the most work, getting your background done, getting your decorative stitches in, and even if you just invisible stitch it all and don't do anything other than that, I think you'll be, yeah, I think you'll find that it will be just pick it up and do a little bit of a stitch in say that much and then you could go to your next piece and your next piece so don't be afraid to try a few pieces i'm going to put this linen down next i'll use a fairly big piece of it and that way it's in position spotted a piece of lace over there on my desk that I love working into these my, my work so I think I'm just going to snip and snip a piece off it's in why not now that little handkerchief that I cut the edge off there was a cute little doily on the end of that yeah let's give him a home let's cut it where they've stitched it onto the doily that would make a great flower as in a, a feature flower you know that's that's the top of a tulip or a, something along those lines Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna I'm going to stitch him there. I'm going to pleat it a little bit so it's got a little bit of movement about it, and he will become the foundation for something. Is he a wallflower? I don't know. Like I said in my first video, wallflowers tend to be quite um, strappy sort of pieces there they don't have usually really thick well in australia they don't have really thick leaves because they're usually trying to just survive in pretty rugged country so our wildflowers are very spindly looking so i'm going to leave that as a bit of something someday and that could easily become a bit of a, a garden embroidery there yeah i like that so that little hanky bit's found a home. What else do we have? This piece here, we need to find a home. Forever there. You're done. You're in. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece of, I don't know what you are. It was a little morsel. Maybe I'll get a bit of this velvety. Okay. 
time to use. Get rid of that. Yep. That's looking good. Should probably pop some music back into the story just to have that consistency. So let's just cut a little morsel out. And just pop it there for no reason whatsoever. And it could even get covered. Who knows? I haven't used the mustard. Do I need the mustard? I don't know if I do. I haven't used one of these little guys. They were sort of part of my inspiration. So let's just separate them. Don't want to get too lacy. I'll cut them all apart and they can just go into my tray of doily bits. I'm always on the lookout for squares because there's heaps and heaps of round things that you can use or find. But squares are a challenge. So let's see if we can get a square in. Maybe that's part of the bottom treatment. Let's get some fabric down first. Something that's that will be fine. Maybe this goes like a diamond down the bottom here. What else have we got? Use up these last few morsels. I'm trying to keep my background pieces reasonably large at this stage because then that gives you wriggle room that if you decide to do something right here, where's that? You know, so let's say you decide to do some stitching here, you've got little bits that then can come in, little morsels of things to build up a, an area. That doesn't overlap, but I'm not too worried. I'd rather it overlap down here. I need something here. Maybe I, where's that stripe? What did I do with it? Let's get a little bit of this green in there. Just to make it look like I have put a bit of thought into this. These will make great leaves too. I cut out leaves to do something. Maybe I lift that up. And then maybe I'll put that down there just to break up that corner joining. Yeah, I like that. See, that there is a great little area to do something with. These pieces are going to be so different. Have I got my letters up, numbers up the right way? Yes. It'll be great to have some that are more embroidery-based, some that are more lace collections of things, and then the rolling pin is going to be somewhere I can put my collection of um, um, doilies. So it's going to be awesome to have the ability to um, store some of my treasures. And these snippet rolls are perfect for that. So there's another little one. Let's just keep him for a rainy day and him. Might just change that to a bull clip. There's a bull clip. Sorry, just organising myself a little bit here. Just 
don't need that. Now, I did look at a braid for the bottom. Don't need that. Don't need that. Got some more bits here that can go in the ball clip for building up layers when it comes down to the embroidery side of things. So they can all go together. That piece there is just not going to work, so he's out. So I've got another edge bit here, maybe I... Who knows? I'm just going to pin it there. Who knows? I'll invisible stitch it if I don't like it and I want it gone. Um, don't need that. That's an interesting scrap from the first. See, things like that make great... No, I won't cut it. Things like that make great uh, stems. So back up here, that this guy could use that for his stem and then build your leaves on it create a whole whole piece there I'll just run that through there so that it's together and if I cut some um, leaves out of that green like that's where these types of things come in to create stems all right, where are we at? We're down the bottom here, and I'm looking for something to go on the bottom. What's in these braids? What's in the handkerchiefs? I haven't really used the handkerchiefs. Do I bring that back into the bottom? I don't mind that idea. Yeah, I might just pin that there. That would give the doily 100% a home. That will catch it on that end. So you've got to have a think about the bottoms of your piece. It's nice to have something decorative down there. Pinned it, but I haven't caught the doily. Good one. Now I want my piece to be one length and they're all the same length because I've got four already made from previous years of doing snippet rolls. So, but if you're not sure how long you want your piece, you might not want to stitch anything on the bottom yet because you might add to it. And you can make them as long as you want. But I know that I've got this end that I need to consider. So I'm confident I can go ahead and do that. Okay. That's pretty good. Probably just don't have enough pins and it's flopping around a bit, but it's not too much of a problem, I don't think. Invisible stitch, here I come. Then I can start thinking about my, my actual wildflowers. I'm going to run out of pins if I don't go and do some stitching. Okay. So the type of stitching I'm going to do, which I've probably already mentioned on this piece, is um, overcast stitch, where I just go around that edge, especially the ones like that that are going to fray. So let's get some thread happening here. I'll keep it fairly neutral. I might go looking. I've got some linen thread. Here it is here. Got this thread. There's only little bits of it left, so 
I might as well use it up. So those bits go there. And now I'm going to just overcast stitch this down because if I don't, it will disintegrate pretty quickly. I'm just going to start up in this top corner. It's probably not logical. You'd start from there and go around, but just the way the camera system is set up here for reach, I find this the best. Oh, see, that's why you get rid of your pins with invisible stitch. So I am jumping the gun here a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We've got time, so I'm just going to show you a few of the stitches I'm planning for this piece. I'm going to try and keep it very primitive stitching, if that's a, a word to use. I think it is, because there are embroiderers out there that do that primitive style of stitching. So the next video, so you're, you're watching this Sunday. So Monday will be the next one. And that will be, where's my note paper? That will be the French garden. So the third snippet roll, which has all the reds, the burgundies, the red work, all those types of themes. And it'll be probably similar the, to this where I just patch it down and then go from there. But we'll see. You don't know until you pull your fabrics out. Oops and start stitching. So we're halfway through the video. Oh, that's great. I guess I saved a bit of time by spending 20 minutes starting my piecing that we're now able to do some embroidery on this one. I'm not sure how the videos will roll with this project because there's four. Will I show you what I'm up to on each one within the video? Or will I dedicate a video to one snippet roll? I don't know. I'll just have to see what the prompts are, I guess. I don't know what day they'll appear. I sort of, I'll just have to see what sort of, if I can get into a bit of a rhythm. I do like order to my chaos. So I possibly work out a bit of a system, but you know, what if I have times where I just can't pick up a needle and thread? So maybe it will be a little bit more random this year. I don't know. We'll see. I'll try and get you a video every day. But you know, stitching is different to paper craft. Stitching takes hours, where a journal you can sort of set your desk up, surround yourself with paper and away you go. And it's very easy to create a video a day and um, just keep working through a project. Where stitching, once I get off camera, I've got to have the time to do the, all the stitching. So I just don't know if you will get a video a day. We will see. Most of my channel this year, I think, will be needlework, but I'll take a break from the paper craft. But who knows? There we go. So I've come down that outer edge. Now I might, I'm going to put a little knot there and finish it. Might I can get rid of those couple of pins, get some more thread. See, places like this that are very plain, I probably will do something in there like a seed stitch or you know, just get a background done, and then it won't matter what I embroider over it. 
but we'll see. Can't be making big decisions on day one. Otherwise it's fast stitch and not slow stitch, hey? So now I'm just coming down this outer edge with my overcast. Gone quiet. I'm concentrating. I like to find a flower I can embroider that suits this colour scheme. You know when you go through your fabrics and you find a big floral and you can cut out of it something that can be embroidered. So I think I need to go looking for a quilt fabric or a scrap of something like um, something of that nature. So I've got a bit of a flower and some leaves so I can do a bit of an embroidery on this. So I think that's what I'll do next. And what I might do is I might stop this video close to the end, jump up, go to my cupboard and see if I can find something that can be added for future embroidery. Because I'd rather rather do it now and get it in to position and not have the space for it down the track. Okay. Might leave that. Oh, I'm going to tuck this piece up under there. I know I haven't, but I think I do. It's all wriggled a little bit. There we go, that's better. Where do we go with the time? Plenty of time. Okay. Wonder what the girls will do for the second half of the year. The pressure's on now, isn't it? We've created quite a tribe. So those girls will be like having to consider the second half of the year. Will they guide us through another project? I hope so. I hope you do, girls. Hope you hang in there with us all. Okay, coming up to this edge. It hasn't secured down this piece. It's only catching this big guy here. So that is looking good. Lovely. That is not going anywhere. Okay. Now that my background's done, I will be able to strip out of my project boxes a lot of the excess fabrics, which will be good. So all of these types of things. And if I do decide I need something, because it's right there in front of me, I can always go hunting for them. So they're gonna go away into my stash. That's not needed, so that can go away. And I've got a little pile of little bits. I didn't end up using any of this lace. It would make a good bottom on it, but we'll see. And I didn't end up using these yet, but I might yet. I might fussy cut out some of these pieces so they will stay the handkerchiefs I'm definitely gonna fussy cut this one it's only little so I think I could do that I'll leave the handkerchiefs for a moment 
and the braids because they all may contribute to building up layers of embroidery. I'll leave all that in there. I didn't make my boxes real big this time because I just don't want it to get out of hand. The Christmas got out of hand. Oh my goodness. It did. All right. What was I going to do? Okay, I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to go looking for a flower on a piece of fabric that matches, that can be added to this somewhere before this gets, you know, too far ahead. All right, I will be back in a moment. Hi guys, sec. I'm back. Okay, that was harder than I thought. I thought for sure there'd be a neutral floral piece somewhere. I end up going into the um, William Morris fabrics. Well, I don't even think they're William Morris, that is. And these were part of the pack that the shop put together when I bought the William Morris pack. But I'm pretty sure they're not William Morris. These are sort of the size I want. But I've got this blue in there. It'd be better if they were on a neutral background. That's the sister to the fabric. But I don't really want mustard to come in or blue, but I would embroider over it. So it's not like it wouldn't disappear. And at least I've got the background is correct. Let's say I cut off this little piece here. And then, but then I've got to work really hard to embroider this into a different color to match, which is, you know, not hard to do certainly would be pretty so that's probably an option that one there it's just not the right feel for the piece I don't think so those two are definitely out that's an option and I can easily cut out that little bit I could probably even yeah that's that's got potential there because if I took those little guys that and that I could potentially just take that whole corner off and then work these through the whole piece so that's getting me a little bit excited at the thought of that this one here I found but it's sort of not quite right either because I don't want pink in it but once again I can cover the roses but there is a lot of work in there and I think it would get quite messy this is a piece that I'd probably keep in its entirety and then just highlight some of them. I think I might put this with the French garden, which will be in the next video. I think that works better. This one here, I've nibbled out before little roses. I just think they're a bit too small for this project. Everything's quite chunky, so I don't think that's going to work. Put that away. And then I found this one, which is a great flower to embroider, but it's too big, I think. It's, it's too overpowering. So I don't think that's any good. Okay, so that's the best options I've got. And to be honest, I would probably have to go hunting for some fabric from a shop and I don't want to buy any fabric like I don't need to I've got plenty so where did I look at and thought I could take the corner off this one here yeah I think I could cut that out I'm going to do it I'm going to just remove that corner and then see if I can work in some of these pieces in amongst my work. So I might just keep this fabric nearby it's getting a bit olive but this was all about champagne and I'm starting to 
So it'd be a case of I fussy cut out some of these and then just have them popping in like that would be good to poke in behind just that leaf and just work that leaf. So I'm going to put that snippet with my bull clip because I think we're heading into a direction here that I'm liking. Maybe this is going to be quite a bit of olive. I don't know. Oh, goodness me. That's going to come together either way. All right, guys. That's pretty much this piece now pinned. I will... Um, stitch it down with invisible stitch just catching everything down so that it doesn't move and making sure it's nice and flat and then I will start doing just basting overcast blanket stitch you know all sorts of random stitching just to give the background a little bit more detail some camphor stitch some um, seed stitch so then my piece will be nice and secure and then I can start thinking about the wildflowers. So that one's coming together. All right, guys, I think that's it for this piece. He's ready to go. I've got my box of scraps sorted a little. So we've got two now. So the next video will be the French garden, which is also a snippet roll. Okay, I will say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.